What if your customer experience and culture strategy didn't just create value, but actually funded your growth? I'm inviting you to join me in a powerful mastermind group I'm co-leading with JourneySpark Consulting. It's called the CX and Culture Connection, creating a self-funding growth flywheel. And it brings together CX and culture leaders who want to drive change, build stronger internal collaboration, and actually reinvest efficiency savings into growth-driving initiatives. This isn't just theory. You'll get monthly virtual sessions, one-on-one coaching, quarterly workshops, and access to the Value Accelerator tools focused on strategy, cultural alignment, and voice of customer. Plus, you'll connect with leaders across functions, from marketing to product to ops, who are facing the same challenges and pushing towards the same goals. Up to four team members can participate from your organization, so you're building alignment while building momentum. Want in? Learn more and sign up at journeysparkconsulting.com slash mastermind. That's journeysparkconsulting.com slash mastermind. Let's turn your CX investment into a growth engine. The Agile Brand. Welcome to Season 7 of The Agile Brand, where we discuss the trends and topics marketing leaders need to know. Stay curious, stay agile, and join the top enterprise brands and MarTech platforms as we explore marketing technology, AI, e-commerce, and whatever's next for the omni-channel customer experience. Together, we'll discover what it takes to create an agile brand built for today and tomorrow, and built for customers, employees, and continued business growth. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advising Fortune 1000 brands on MarTech, AI, and marketing operations. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full-stack technology services, talent services, and real-world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To make sure you always get the latest episodes, please hit subscribe on the app you listen to podcasts on and leave us a rating so others can find us as well. And now on to the show. Welcome to this episode brought to you by Reka, a developer of industry-leading multimodal AI models that enable individuals and organizations to develop generative AI applications. In the previous episode sponsored by Reka, we spoke with Danny Yogatama, CEO. Today, we're going to talk about how culture powers agility and Reka's approach to building AI with a lean, high-impact team. My guest is Eugenie Lamprecht, Chief of Staff of RECA, and she's going to be sharing how they foster a culture of agility, efficiency, and innovation, all while operating as a lean team empowered by the very AI tools they build. Eugenie, welcome to the show. Hi, Greg. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this topic with you. Um, and, um, you know, as Chief of Staff at RECA, we want to learn from you, you know, what, what it takes for RECA to not only develop cutting edge tools, but also use them internally to work smarter, faster, and leaner. So let's uh, let's talk about culture first. How would you describe the culture at RECA? And you know, what are some of the core values that guide how the team works uh, together? Yeah, sure. So at RECA, we believe that doing something truly meaningful in this new era of AI, it takes more than just great tech skills. It takes a group of really talented and world-class individuals that are aligned and work together towards the same goal. And of course, technical excellence matters a lot, but just as important as character, especially in a startup, things move fast and there are lots of highs and lots of lows. So you definitely need to be resilient and you need grit. And our team definitely has that. One thing that we also really care about is diversity, uh, not just in backgrounds, but also just the way that people think. Everyone brings something unique to the table, and that's where the magic happens. And our culture is all about curiosity, ownership, and the willingness to experiment. So we want people to take initiative, try new things, and learn by doing. And to make that possible, we focus a lot on creating psychological safety. And then maybe more than anything else is just keeping things simple, like clarity over processes and then trust over bureaucracy and micromanagement. And that's what helps us stay focused, keeps us agile and like keep us focused towards the direction that we're moving in. Yeah, yeah. And definitely as a as a startup, I mean, really of uh, as an organization of any size, but, you know, particularly as a startup, that, that's so key to, you know, be able to have clarity and everybody kind of um, marching in the same direction, so to speak, because there can be a lot of priorities and, and there can be a lot of different 
um, even misalignment if you if you don't do things properly. So, you know, from your lens as chief of staff, how do you support that that alignment and as well as the momentum of, you know, of, of a startup across the team as the company continues to grow? Yeah. So right now we're a team of about 50 and we're growing and we're also fully remote. So staying aligned is super important for us. Um, yeah. As we scale, we try to be intentional about finding the right balance between having some structure, but also still keeping things flexible. So we've got a few internal rituals that help us stay connected and so that everyone knows what's going on. Things like regular stand-ups, weekly company-wide uh, syncs, asynchronous updates. But we try to keep those light um, so that it's not just about checking off boxes, but it's about sharing real context so that people know what is going on and where we're going. And we're very thoughtful about the tools we use. So for us, it really comes down to just keeping those the communication very clear and have people on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, 50 people, that's a, that's a good size. You're continuing to grow. Um, but even, you know, even 50, it's a relatively lean team to do all of the work and, and accomplish all of the things that you're doing with the growth that RECA has achieved and, you know, thinking ahead and, and continually thinking ahead, how does the team avoid burnout? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are motivated, you know, they want to do great things and, and do the, you know, the, the next best thing. But, you know, how do you help them avoid burnout? And, you know, what's the secret to making that work? Yeah, yeah, that is uh, definitely something that we pay close attention to. Being a lean team means that we have to stay focused and intentional. Uh, We don't have the luxury to spread ourselves too thin. One of the ways that we do that is just prioritizing clarity over chaos. So everyone is very clear on what matters most. And we're not afraid to say no to things that doesn't line up with our goals. Burnout often feels like you're sprinting in the dark. So we try to keep things transparent and human. We keep those, we also try and keep the processes light. So the asynchronous updates and the handoffs, we don't want to burn unnecessary energy on meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the, what's the culture aspect of this? You know, in addition, obviously you need the right processes, you need the right tools in place, but, you know, the, the people part of that people process platform kind of uh, equation, you know, how do you, how do you look at the culture aspect? Yeah, definitely. I think what is important is just uh, creating a real sense of psychological safety and trust. People at RECA feel comfortable speaking up when they stretch too thin or something, if something isn't clear. And then we're very intentional about the people that we bring onto the team People at RECA aren't just super talented. They're incredibly kind and supportive and thoughtful. So when someone is going through a tough time or they need to just take a step back, the team will naturally step up, um, no questions asked. So this kind of empathy is something that we actively look for when, when we're hiring. Want to learn more and join the discussion about marketing and AI? Attend the premier conference dedicated to marketing and AI. That's Mayacon, the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Conference from October 14 through 16 in Cleveland, Ohio. Mayacon brings together the brightest minds and leading voices in AI. Don't miss this opportunity to connect with a dynamic community of experts, visionaries, and enthusiasts. The Agile brand is proud to be the lead media sponsor of this important event. Register today at marketingaiinstitute.com. That's marketingaiinstitute.com and use the code AGILE150 for $150 off your registration fee. I can't wait to see you there. And so I want to I want to get back to a point we touched on briefly a few minutes ago, but you know, as um thinking about agility in, you know, in an organization Again, regardless of the size of the organization, but, you know, working with a relatively lean team, there can be a lot of priorities. And, you know, as a startup, there's all kinds of stakeholders and, um, you know, from customers to investors and, and all those kinds of things. How do you look at prioritization when everything, you know, what I mean, there's a saying, you know, when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. But, you know, how do you how do you actually prioritize when everything feels important? Yeah, yeah, that that's a that's a tough one. 
in a startup, everything can feel important, right. um, especially when you're trying to move product forward, you're trying to build a team, you're trying to grow the business. But for us, it really comes down to alignment and clarity. Um, yeah. We're all, always asking ourselves what is actually moving the needle forward, not just what's urgent, but actually like genuinely meaningful. It's very easy to slip into this reactive mode, especially in AI where things are shifting and there are updates daily. Right. So we make time to check in regularly, zoom out and ask ourselves like, is this still the right thing to work on? And if the answer is no, we that's fine. Like we we are okay with making that decision and just tell ourselves like this is not this might be important, but just not right now. So we'll move the priorities around. And I think prioritization isn't static. Uh, so that's something that we definitely do quite often. And then being a lean team, you I think that is actually our strength. Uh, we can't do everything, so that really f- forces us to keep focused on what really matters. Yeah. 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 I love, I love that you said that, you know, prioritization isn't static because I, I strongly believe that. I think that's, it's a false way to kind of fall back on, on, you know, what we should be doing when, you know, when we don't kind of rethink priority and rethink objectives and, and stuff like that in a, in a meaningful way. So that's, that's great. From an advice standpoint, um, you know, what's a, what's one low lift thing that a, a enterprise leader or other leaders can do to build a more agile, empowered culture like you have at RECA? Yeah, I really believe that it comes down to the experimentation mindset. It's all about creating the space to actually try new things. And it doesn't have to be this big top-down initiative. You can start small. It's just something as simple as carving out a few hours a week for an internal team to try an AI tool or just creating like a simple automation for some manual task. Yeah, and it's about like, creating a safe space to exp- experiment without the pressure of it having to be perfect. And that's where the innovation really happens is where people can learn fast, but does they don't have the pressure that to deliver this polished result. And I think maybe also just something as simple as just removing friction so that a small team can move faster. And then that kind of mindset takes root it starts spreading naturally and it will spread to, to other teams. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's so powerful to, for leaders to really understand that when they expect uh, an experiment cannot always end perfectly. So in other words, like learning is, if learning is the objective, then you don't really mess up ever, or you don't, you don't fail. Right. It's, you know, when, when, when perfection is the only possible outcome everyone's going to be afraid to innovate right yeah definitely yeah so um looking ahead a little bit and uh, you know just kind of thinking about you know how others can can build a a, an agile culture really that's kind of what we're talking about is is building an agile culture and one that's that's able to innovate what's a, a moment at RECA that made you go you know this is what agile culture looks like yeah um one moment that really stood out for me was just after I joined in 2023. Danny, our CEO, had a request for our tech team, and it was a bit, it wasn't unusual, but it was outside of their day to day scope. Yeah. But without hesitation, the team jumped on a call. They figured out what needed to happen, and they had like an MVP ready within 24, 24 to 48 hours. Wow. And what was impressive to me wasn't just that it was fast, it was so focused and full of energy. And everyone rallied around this one goal and just got it done. But honestly, the mindset kind of shows up every day. For example, like during our company syncs, uh, different teams will share updates or uh, wins or context. And you'll often see people jumping in to help with a project that's not even in line with their day-to-day responsibilities or scope. And then when things feel unclear or misaligned, someone will always spin up a quick call um, and get everyone on the same page to keep things moving. Yeah. So there's, yeah, so there's accountability, but also it sounds like curiosity to help maybe in, in ways that are not necessarily, you know, if there's strict job descriptions, you know, sometimes those things fall outside of those lines, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, Eugenie, thanks so much for joining today. Um, one last question before we wrap up here. I like to ask this to everybody. 
what do you do to stay agile in your role and and how do you find a way to do it consistently? Yeah, so in my role where I come across a lot of the operational details, it's very easy to get pulled into the weeds. And although those details matters, I matters, I've learned um, that I need to take a step back and deliberately zoom out and look at the bigger picture. That really helps me to prioritize or focus on the right things. And then to stay agile, I try to build some structure to prioritize things without being too rigid. So on days where I don't, where I can control my schedule, I'll start off by just quickly scanning. So not actually reading, but scanning my emails and my Slack messages for anything urgent. If there are no fires to put out, um, I'll start with smaller tasks and check-ins. And I know that seems counterintuitive, but for me, I found that once I get those things out of the way, then I can spend my afternoons more with deep work and uh, bigger, um, longer t- longer term product projects. And then before the day wraps up, I'll clear out my inbox um, so that I don't carry extra clutter into the next day. But I would say beyond the logistics, I think staying agile is also a mindset. It's about being okay with plan shifting and just creating enough process to support that chaos without slowing things down. So for me, it's like a it's a it's a constant dance between planning and improvising and being intentional about both. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Eugenie Lamprecht, Chief of Staff of RECA, for joining the show. And thanks to our sponsor, RECA, a developer of industry-leading multimodal AI models that enable individuals and organizations to deploy generative AI applications. You can learn more about Eugenie and RECA by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe and leave us a rating so that others can find the show as well. You can access more episodes of the show at theagilebrand.com. That's theagilebrand.com. And contact me if you're interested in consulting or advisory services or are looking for a speaker for your next event. Go to www.gregkillstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay curious and stay agile. The Agile brand. Ever heard of farm to table? How about farm to home? That's how Costa Farms' plant business works. With over 1,500 plant varieties grown over 5,200 acres, they're not just a company. They're your plant partners who've been perfecting their craft for 60 years. They deliver beautiful, high-quality, easy-to-care-for plants. They even offer virtual plant consultations and an insider club for rare plant access. Check out www.costafarms.com today and enter code worth knowing Costa farms 15 for a 15 percent discount on your first purchase you can also purchase this unique plant brand at lowe's walmart amazon and home depot go to www.costacostafarms.com today